guys, it's Morgan, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Season 3 of the Netflix show, A Series of Unfortunate Events. Now, Season 3 goes through books 10 to 13 of the series, which are The Slippery Slope, The Grim Grotto, The Penultimate Peril, and The End. Now, if you haven't seen Season 3, there will be spoilers in this review, so stop watching if you don't want to be spoiled. With that said, here's my review of Season 3 of the Netflix show, A Series of Unfortunate Events. I loved Sunny's relationship with the hook-handed man. Even though he's part of Count Olaf's troop, you could see that he cared about Sunny, and it was really cute to see him help her. I already knew it would happen, but I felt really sorry for Violet and Klaus when they found out that the survivor of the fire wasn't one of their parents, but was Isadora and Duncan's brother Quigley. But I was glad that Quigley found out that Isadora and Duncan were safe, and I loved seeing them reunite at the end of the show. Even though Count Olaf's evil, I did feel a little sorry for him when he was trying to get approval from the woman with hair but no beard and the man with a beard but no hair, since they trained him, but they didn't care about all the things that he's done. Sunny is a very smart and brave baby, since when Violet and Quigley came to rescue her, she told them that she wanted to stay and spy on Count Olaf and his troop. And I really loved the moment when Violet said that she didn't want to leave Sunny because she's her baby sister, and Sunny said that she wasn't a baby. It's clear she's grown up a lot considering everything the Baudelaire's have been through. It took a long time for it to happen, but I was proud of Count Olaf's troop when they decided that they didn't want to follow him anymore. And I also liked how the hook-handed man pretended to kill Sunny by throwing the cage off the cliff, even though Sunny wasn't in it. Sunny and the hook-handed man is an odd friendship, but it's enjoyable to watch. It was nice to see the Baudelaire's reunite with Phil, and I also thought it was funny when Klaus apologized for Phil's leg injury that Klaus caused at the mill, but Phil said that that healed and that his leg was eaten by a shark. If Count Olaf and Esme had to have a child, Carmelita is the perfect child. But it was funny how much she annoyed Count Olaf. I mean, you would think that since they both hate the Baudelaire's, that would make Count Olaf like her, but that was not the case. The fact that the hook-handed man cares about Sunny came in handy when Violet and Klaus got his help to escape the brig and find an antidote for Sunny since she was poisoned by the mushrooms. Even though the hook-handed man still wanted to impress Count Olaf, you could tell that he wasn't completely evil. It was nice to see that even though Fiona joined Count Olaf's troop to be with her brother, the hook-handed man, she still let the Baudelaire's escape, proving that she isn't evil, she just wants to be with her brother. When Mr. Poe told the Baudelaire's that they can't go off on their own when they left him to go with Kit Snicket, I was thinking, they have been on their own this entire time and Mr. Poe hasn't cared about them. They're used to it. I, along with the Baudelaire's, had a hard time figuring out which manager was Frank and which one was Ernest, obviously since they're identical. But Frank and Ernest didn't make it any easier since they didn't tell the Baudelaire's which one they were. The one thing that didn't make sense to me is that all the people that the Baudelaire's knew that were at the hotel didn't recognize them. I mean, they were wearing concierge outfits, but you would think they would recognize their faces. But I guess they just weren't paying attention. I did like that Justice Strauss recognized them, 
I mean, she's one of the very few adults that actually cares about the Baudelaire's. It was nice when Dewey was telling the Baudelaire's that he and Kit are going to leave so they can raise their child, and he wanted to give the Baudelaire's the library that was secretly at the hotel. And in a perfect world, that would happen. But the Baudelaire's don't live in a perfect world, so unfortunately, it didn't. Count Olaf had a point that the Baudelaire's have done terrible things, but Count Olaf has been the reason that they had to do those terrible things, so you can't really blame them. It was pretty funny when Count Olaf was put in a birdcage, and Sunny clearly enjoyed it since it was karma for Count Olaf putting her in a birdcage. And when Count Olaf said, what kind of person put someone in a birdcage, I was thinking, you. You are the kind of person that puts someone in a birdcage. When Count Olaf was pretending to be Kit, but none of the people on the island believed him, and Friday said that even a child could tell that it was Count Olaf, I was thinking, the people on this island are smarter than any of the other people the Baudelaire's have ever met. I'm not sure how the incredibly deadly viper got on the island, but I was glad that it was able to get the apple for Violet, Klaus, and Sunny to cure them from the mushroom poison. But I did think it was strange that after they were cured, they didn't think to question why the incredibly deadly viper was there. Even though Count Olaf has done terrible things, I was glad that he saved Kit before he died. And I'm still not a fan of Count Olaf, but seeing how much he still loves Kit was really sweet. I loved how the show ended with Beatrice meeting her uncle, Lemony Snicket, and telling him about her adventures with Violet, Klaus, and Sunny. I mean, Lemony's siblings might all be dead, but he still has one family member left. And, thanks to Beatrice, he'll find out what happened to Violet, Klaus, and Sunny. Thanks for watching, guys! If you saw season 3, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. And if you want to see any of my future videos, Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.